does it. Don't let her know we're watching. Let's just take a look over her shoulder, because if I'm not mistaken, there's something rather special going on here. Ah, just as I thought. See that message coming through? Well, that in a sense is a birth certificate, my birth certificate. 60 stroke SC9. That's my identity number. And this batch of facts and figures coming through now, they're my vital statistics, for I'm destined to become a VIP of very important paint. As you see, I'm wanted urgently in Aden. Phew, looks like a hot assignment. In the minute or two it's taken to introduce myself, several copies of my birth certificate have been automatically produced and sent by pneumatic postmen to all the main departments of this giant manufacturing plant. And for every paint order that reaches international headquarters, this same routine of high-speed issue of instructions holds good. The end product will have to contend with varying conditions throughout the world. The sea and the creatures that live in it are tough on paint. A yacht whose smooth lines are completely broken up through the poor quality and misuse of paint will never win races. Six or seven months at sea can result in serious incrustations such as these. To a busy merchant ship, marine fouling could mean a drastic reduction in speed and an equally drastic increase in fuel consumption. So you see, paint has quite a responsibility to those who go down to the sea in ships. Yet, even in the most homely setting, Far from the terrors of the deep, enemies are waiting for us. Sun, frost, and atmospheric pollution will take their toll of the most attractive color scheme, all too soon. Unless, of course, the right paint is selected in the first place and properly applied. For this installation, and many like it, paint must be more than decorative. Corrosion is a real problem here. Corrosion due to the special chemical processes carried on in the vicinity of this eight-tower purifier at a large gas well. So the paint has been chosen to withstand the most testing wear that corrosive fumes can offer. A similar location, requiring paint with the very finest protective and heat-resisting properties, is this modern power station. With so many tasks for paint to fulfill, do you wonder that International take what seem at first sight to be extreme measures in the making, testing, and analytical control of their paint? Extreme measures? Well, let's just look in on one or two of the special tests that are constantly in progress in the company's research laboratories. We needn't rush it, for this particular test has been in progress for nearly two years, and it's still not finished. A lot can happen to paint in two years beneath the water, and International means to know all about it by observing and assessing the corrosive effects of the seawater. After years of exhaustive research, International have evolved a range of special paints which combine the two vital properties of an anti-corrosive for underwater use. They are quick drying and truly waterproof. While in one corner of the laboratory they are concerned with the rate of breakdown of a surface, in another they are scrutinizing the rate of build-up, something of everything here. Cuprous oxide is an important ingredient of many anti-fouling paints, and the purity of the basic copper is a prime consideration. Electrolysis determines this precisely. Now meet a man who is a practiced poisoner a poisoner of the marine organisms which, as we've seen, have such a firm affection for ship's bottom. In the hands of this toxicologist lie the fate of millions of undersea creatures. You see, international paints produce a range of marine anti-fouling compositions that work this way. The varnishes and pigments of these special paints form on drying a microscopic protective mesh all over the ship's bottom. In the hollows of this mesh, poison is waiting for the moment when the ship will take the sea. These poisons gradually dissolve, enveloping the ship in a kind of porous skin which emits a steady flow of poisonous liquid capable of crippling or killing any microscopic marine growth that try to make their home on the ship's bottom.
purpose of this particular test, to ensure that the poison from these anti-fouling compositions leaches out into the water at the right speed, not too quickly, or the composition will soon lose its anti-fouling properties, and not too slowly, or the composition won't fulfill its death-dealing mission. Don't imagine, though, that we paints are just concerned with death and destruction. There's a colourful side to our lives as well. And the pigments that provide us with that colour are among the most costly of all paint ingredients. A pound of this one costs about 30 shillings. And if you need a ton of this one, it will cost you as much as a dozen motor cars. Fully aware of this high finance, here's a girl who's busily engaged rubbing out the precious pigment in order to test its tinting strength. She wants to be sure that this particular batch of pigment is up to standard as far as colour strength is concerned. So she's discovering how much of the white paste is needed before the rich pigment is finally rubbed out. In this way, she can assess the pigment's colour value and she can get a weight-for-weight -weight comparison with the control specimen of that pigment. When a paint is destined for service in intense tropical sunlight, the colour stability of the pigment matters a lot. So here's a box full of ultraviolet light, enough to make the toughest of pigments pale. So you see, the choice of pigment really does matter. Not only in the comfort of the laboratory, but in rugged environments like the briny atmosphere of this craggy little island, international paints are perpetually under test. Here are ideal conditions to simulate marine wear and tear on a paint surface. are industry's contributions to paint wear and tear. And this particular test rack puts international paints through the industrial hoop. After all, the most practical test for any paint is to see how it measures up to the very conditions it will meet with in actual use. And that's precisely how international paints are blunted. It takes quite a paint to endure conditions like these and retain its original brilliance. As a paint for use in the Middle East, I'll be more concerned with the effects of baking sunshine than with smoke and smog. But like literally every international paint, for industrial, domestic or marine use, my manufacture has been rehearsed many times over. Take varnish media, produced first on a laboratory scale, then on a pilot plant scale, handling 100 weighted materials, before production on a truly massive scale gets underway in the synthetic resins department. Massive is the word. Each of these autoclaves handles five tons of raw ingredients daily. The vessels operate at temperatures up to 300 degrees centigrade, but so efficiently that you can keep a perfectly cool head up here among the control panels. There go the resin forming ingredients, phthalic anhydride and penta erythritol. Then the natural drying oils are pumped in, in the exact amounts dictated by the special formula fitting me for my assignment in Aden. Yes, there's plenty more oil where that came from. Something like half a million gallons of it, waiting in the factory yard in battalions of storage tanks. Paint mixing begins on the top floor of a number of three-story buildings. Special resins called epoxide resins are used in my manufacture. They ensure that I'll dry with a hard yet flexible film, just the quality needed to help me withstand the effects of intense sunshine on a metal surface. Separate stages of manufacture are conducted on each of the four floors. In this way, gravity is put to work. 
By the simple expedient of pouring the dry ingredients through a hole in the floor, they are fed to the pebble mills below, on floor two, into which have already been pumped the appropriate amounts of liquid media. In the mills, specially selected beach pebbles are used. By the tumbling action of the pebbles, the ingredients are intimately mixed, freed of every trace of harshness and grittiness, and transformed into a truly homogeneous state. Then into giant tanks protruding through the next floor, where both dry and liquid ingredients are further mixed. By the time we reach the ground floor, everything which goes to make a top grade paint has been finally brought together. Of course, paint mixing, blending and refining can be carried out in a variety of ways. Different mills for different jobs, reflecting the truly wide variety of paints produced by international today. Whether the need is for a hard-wearing emulsion paint of subtle pastel shade, or a really durable enamel, or a paint to withstand extremes of heat or chemical attack, there's an international paint to meet that need. But always the accent is on quality, durability, and color. And here I am at last. International Epicel Aluminium Paint, identifiable now as a paint in my own right. But I shall need a container, and a really modern plant exists to make it on the spot. The metal sheets receive the base color, are rolled, and welded, and the drums take shape. From every batch of international paint produced, a sample is taken and stored for possible future reference. Remember this, my identity number again. It will follow me right through life. So if any query about my breeding or pedigree arises, I can promptly be traced by means of this number and my vital statistics will be revealed in detail. A routine which is followed for each of the thousands of different orders fulfilled by International each year. Yet although this is all highly organized, there's still plenty of pioneer work to be done in the world of paint. Still plenty of room for exciting new discoveries. And not a few of these discoveries are being made in the group's development department, where the frontiers of knowledge are being constantly extended. Even I am a relatively new development, still rather special in the world of paint. And here I am, safely arrived at my destination and preparing to go into service. This then has been one paint story, but it's also the story of all international paint. Paints that are aptly named indeed, for they are made in many lands and they find their way to every corner of the globe. Indeed, over one third of the world's ships are painted with international. Between the many research and production centers of the international group around the world, there's a constant exchange of news, laboratory reports, technical information. So whenever there's anything new in the world of paint, you can be sure that International's worldwide organization soon knows all about it. It's fascinating to watch the international network from the early beginnings in Newcastle, spreading to Copenhagen, New York, Genoa, Hamburg, Trieste, Gothenburg, La Havre, Bergen, Bilbao, Montreal, Rio de Janeiro, Glasgow, Sydney, San Francisco, Mexico City, Wellington, Vancouver, Melbourne, Rouen, Maracaibo, Auckland, Rotterdam, Cal
Calcutta, Regina, Lagos. Yes, with associated factories serving its agents throughout the world, International really does live up to its name. The uses of International paints are universal, too. In this London factory, making drill guns, the component parts are sprayed before assembly. Farm implements receive a final coat. Petrol pumps are given a brilliant finish, the color scheme depending on the customer's choice. Yes, paint helps to sell petrol. And talking of petrol, in the well-known oil company's new headquarters, there are 20 acres of international paint on the ceilings alone. In the spacious new buildings of this university, light and color are the keynotes of the contemporary design. International paints are equally at home in the grammar schools, such as this one, being treated with multicolor finish. And of course, in the domestic citadels of our day, whose designers, more imaginative than their grandfathers, compete for eye appeal. If it's a case of improving a property, paint is the great transformer, whether it's a city mansion or a humble cottage like this one in the depths of the country. Indoors, it's just the same story. Here is the Siam House, decorated throughout with international paints by the magazine House Beautiful. A little paint wisely used can go a long way in terms of a brighter, happier home. Wisely used, of course.